In today's demo, we are going to demonstrate how, how to make a simple autocomplete function using just uh, vanilla JavaScript. Uh, an what is an autocomplete function? If you, if you have a look at google.com, for instance, when you start writing at Google, like script, like that, uh, new results are coming in from the server as you type. So if I type javascript the research results in this list is uh, uh, populated as I write so uh, from the beginning it's empty and as I write new search results are coming in all the time and of course those search results are not cached in my browser in any way they are fetched over the network as I write we could, uh, could see this by uh, looking at the network traffic in the browser. <clears throat> so if we try to write ECMAScript instead, ECMA. So for every letter I write, you see here in this query that the first one is E, then it is EC, ECM, and ECMA. And for uh, for this I get a result and we could have a look at the result and uh, in this result we get all the data about uh, ECMA uh, or the search results uh, uh, um, that are related to ECMA. And we are going to do something similar. We are going to use an API uh, that is uh, provided, which gives us uh, football teams and their home pages. And we are going to have an input box as, as we, we write football team names. Uh, the list will be automatically um, populated, just like the Google search box. Um, to help us out with this, we have uh, in our uh, repository, we have a client uh, part as usual, but we also have a server part for this, this assignment because we need a server to fetch the results. The server could be a server located, located uh, not in our project, an external server uh, with course headers set so that we could, could make cross-site um, uh, requests against the server. In this case, however, we are uh, programming against a um, uh, local server that we have written. So this is a simple node server. Y you can go in and have a look what this does if you like, but uh, it's not necess necessary. The only thing you need to know is how to start it. So by uh, okay, so so this URL is probably quite false because this is I, I'm recording this in a, another uh, repository than the the course repository, but the, it should be the same. We need a way to start the server. So if I type npm run server like that, this web server will start. And have a look, it's listening at the port uh, 3001. Uh, so we are going to use this port when, when we are making requests to the server. Our development environment is set up like it, it's it been all the time uh, in, in the previous exercises. So this one is running on, on port 3000, I guess. And let's have a look if we... Uh, go to localhost 3000 and we get a get a request on that port but as for now this is more or less an empty page just should be uh, loading actually this is loading uh, uh, javascript build.js but we don't have anything in that one yet and, and we shall actually not start coding right away we are going to examine it, the the api before uh, on beforehand and we are going to use a tool called postman if you're not familiar with postman i uh, recommend recommend you to check it out uh, it's a browser plugin for chrome i think you can download it as an um, um, a standalone uh, application as well uh, however in this case i've <coughs> started it from chrome uh, so just search for postman and you will uh, get this too. So I could use this tool to try out APIs and make uh, get and post requests for instance without having to write any code. Uh, and in this case I know that the server is located at HTTP localhost colon 3001. 
<clears throat> and we don't get a response. Why don't we get a response? Could not get any response. Colon slash 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 of course like that cannot get it says so the server actually responses with a 404 and says cannot get <coughs> and this is because the API is under the uh, the team uh, uh, path and we try again cannot get. And that is because uh, this API only takes post parameters. So in this case, the, the, the API wants us to post to it. And this should be documented in the API uh, documentations. And if, uh, if you're doing the assignment, you, you, you have those um, requirements uh, in the readme file. So it says that you should do a post against this address. So we tried that one. Uh, Oh, it still says cannot post. Is it Teams maybe? Oh, let me have a look in my documentation. Uh, it should be Teams, of course. So it's not team, it's Teams. And we post and we get a bad request. And that's actually better because now it says that, okay, I accept your post, but you made a bad request. You don't have all the parameters uh, that you need. And in some cases, when you're uh, working against APIs, perhaps you get a, um, a response with uh, some information. What, are I, what am I missing? What did I do wrong? In this case, I didn't send in a query. Uh, and the query should be uh, in JSON uh, format, so we could just write it in so you will have a look. Uh, so this should be a JSON file with a query. Query and the query is the letters that uh, going to on which we are going to make the search on the server for the matching teams. So for instance, if I provide MA, uh, the server should respond with teams starting with MA. Uh, I also need to tell the server that this is not just regular text, it's uh, application slash JSON format. And we do it by adding the content header, content type, whoop, mm, go away, content type, application slash JSON, like that. And whoa, have a look. Uh, it posted and we got a response. So. Uh, um, I posted with the query MA and we got the response that okay your search string was MA uh, we had a match on Man Manchester United and Manchester City uh, if we look in the terminal uh, each time that the, the server is queried uh, with something it will write the query in the terminal as well so we can see, uh, see the chain here uh, okay, so let's go back and change this to something better, like li, for instance. Uh, and we get the Liverpool Football Club back. Great. Uh, I think we will stick with this for now. Uh, and this is pretty much the whole API. You just uh, give, give the API a query with letters and you get a response. And this response is going to... Uh, appear in text boxes below the input field, just like it did on the Google search. So let's have a look at how to do that. Uh, you could, I mean, the first thing we, we need in our, oh, I have some div here. Okay, it could be there. Uh, the first thing we should have in our uh, HTML file is an input field. So we could do something like, just, just let's place a regular input type text uh, and I think that will do for now actually uh, yeah just let us have that one and we go back to oh where did my there it is reload a page and we get input like this uh, a really neat function in HTML5 is something called data lists. Uh, when we are 
right in the Liverpool here for in Li, for instance, we should get a box underneath that says Liverpool. Uh, if if we just think how, if 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 we just want to make this uh, out of nothing that we don't already know, we should probably like, okay, we get the response from the server. Okay, we see that we get one response, then we create a div or something and like place it beneath this uh, input box uh, with some calculations and then uh, we uh, use uh, event handlers on the keyboard to be able to, to use the arrow keys up and down to select, um, select one of the teams. But turns out that HTML5 have, has this really, really neat function called data lists and the data list is basically what we need in this case because we could try to add, add one uh, it's called data list uh, the compatibility I, oh I'm not sure should we have a quick look uh, maybe uh, can I use data list uh, oh, looks quite good except Safari uh, so yeah if you're using this don't uh, uh, count on Safari being on the uh, uh, being with you on this one, but it works actually already in IE 10, so yeah, that's fine. And anyway, we are going to stick with the data list just because it makes this example so much easier for us. Uh, so let's let's show how it works. Uh, the data list have, have an option like like a select uh, or a, uh, uh, yeah select uh, select list. Uh, so we add an option with a value. So we could add my great team uh, and I think it could be, whoa, how did I do that? I think it could be like that in this case, my other team, okay. And then we add an ID to this data list called, let's call it teams. And on the input, we provide a list uh, with a list attribute. Uh, and we tell it that, okay, this input uh, field should use the data list teams like that. Now, if we re uh, uh, refresh the page and uh, we get into the, um, the search field like this and write M for instance, you see that we get those, uh, my great team and my other team by default. And if I pr provide li like that, we don't get those alternatives. We also get this little button uh, that gives us our options. So this is kind of like a select uh, box, uh, a select drop down combined with an input field. So it's, it's really, really nice. And if we take advantage of this, we could actually dynamically add and remove stuff to the data list. So if we add uh, teams to the data list or remove teams from the data list, uh, this will all be handled really, really great by the input button. So I think we have something to work with here. So let's have this as it is. Now we need to hook up on uh, I mean, now it's static. We want to add stuff to this when I write. And if I write L, the L should be sent to the server and we will get the list back. So we need to hook something up on the input field. Uh, and in this case, um, it should be a good thing to add the uh, uh, key pressed uh, event uh, um, or actually the key up. Oh, it doesn't matter in this case so as 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 when i release the key we will uh, send something to the server so let's do that uh, we could add actually add, we have our app.js uh, i will actually add a new file uh, on the spot called autocomplete like that uh, and inside of this one, we will um, make a function called autocomplete, our constructor function for the type, uh, and we will export um, uh, 
this one function or complete uh, we will export that one uh, by doing module.exports uh, and if you're not familiar with uh, the previous examples in the course we are using browserify to be able to to have the same module handling as on the server so something like that function auto complete uh, and we just try console.log oh, hello that and we do uh, Require auto complete uh, new or complete save reload hello so seems like it works perfectly now let's hook it up with the input field so the first thing we're going to do is to get a reference to this input field i will actually give it an id uh, and let's see what would we call it we will call this one team input uh, so we could get a reference to the team input var input field equals uh, document query selector did I do that right team input team input great and let's pass the input to the autocomplete just telling the autocomplete that this is the input you are going to use so in the autocomplete we will get a reference to the input uh, and it this on this input we are going to add the event listener uh, so let's do that input dot add event listener uh, we could have it on key press is it key press k in not k uh, ah let's do it on key up it shouldn't be any different in this case uh, okay so when the key is released we send a request to the server and get the answer back. That's the, the, the process. But just so we know that everything works like we want, we need to control uh, log the key that was pressed because we need to know, uh, know which key was pressed. And we get that by using the event information sent or passed to, to this uh, callback function. Uh, And actually, yeah, we could use the uh, the, uh, the key that the user pressed, but we are not interested in just the key the user pressed. We are interested in the whole text. So if I, for instance, write in this case li, we are not just interested in the i. We are interested in li, and li is the value of the input field so we could try to log just the input dot value here like that reload so when I write M we get an M we've got two M M A M A N so I mean those I'm not sure why we got two M's in this to start with but anyway we get an m m a m a n and those are the search strings or query strings we are supposed to send to the server right to get the response back uh, so this looks kind of right uh, okay so let's hook up the uh, uh, let's hook up the ajax functionality in this case uh, i'll start out by writing the is request uh, the the code for the ajax request in this uh, event listener but we will just to 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 have some training in callbacks functions we will actually move this code out of the autocomplete uh, function and add it in its own uh, type instead uh, or at least its own module uh, but let's just try it uh, this way first 
So the first thing we need to do when doing an IX request, we are going to need a XML HTTP request object. And we do it by doing XML HTTP request uh, like that. Okay, uh, the next thing we need to do is to uh, configure this um, this uh, XML HTTP request object by do, calling the function open. Uh, the first thing open needs is the method, and in our case it's post. We are going to post to the server. Uh, the second uh, argument for the open is uh, the URL uh, that we are going to call. And we could just just let's just write it in here. So it's uh, in this case localhost like that. Uh, when we see localhost here, we are, we we actually know that in a uh, product environment we are going to uh, change this to something else and. Because of that, this will change a lot. I think it's a good thing to, to not uh, write it in the autocomplete function. So instead, we are actually going to, to uh, send a config object into the autocomplete function. And in this config object, we could specify, for instance, an URL. So let's move this one to uh, the config outside, we send in the config, and on this side we get the config and do a config.url, like that. Okay, so now we have opened the request, and the next thing is to send the request. And the send takes uh, um, uh, the options, uh, or the, the body of the, the request uh, that we are going to send to the server. And the body could look something like, we just write it here. Uh, well, then we need to have an escape sequence query, escape colon, and for instance, ma, like that. Something like this. And it gets quite complicated to try to write uh, JSON, this uh, the JSON code this style. So I don't recommend you doing stuff like this. A better pattern for doing this is to to build the um, uh, the query uh, like this. Query equals a new object. Query colon, and in this case, am I like that? So we have a regular JavaScript object. If you get something wrong here, we will uh, immediately know because the, the code will not uh, run. Uh, and instead of like trying to send it in, in a text like this, we could use the json.stringify to take this uh, query object, this one, we pass it to json stringify and uh, we will actually get the string representation of this object uh, from json.stringify. Great. Uh, in this case, ma will be hard coded. So if we try this one, uh, it will not work, but we will probably make the request anyway. Well, let's try. Uh, local host colon 3001. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, not found. No, because it you should add teams as well. So let's add slash teams. Okay, let's try it out. Teams bad request. Got such string undefined. Okay, so something is wrong. Uh, shouldn't it look like that? Query MA. Let's consult uh, Postman. Query li. Yeah. We forgot one thing, we forgot the header, the content type application slash JSON, because uh, our API wanted that uh, that header to be set. Uh, and we could do it just after uh, calling open. We could uh, set request headers. Uh, what header do we want to set? We want to set content type 
think it's a good thing what we have is it shouldn't matter actually. And application slash JSON. Okay, let's try it out and see if we get a bad request still. S. Okay, so the request went through, we got MA. So even if I write something like that, we only get MA. And of course, that's because we have, uh, have it uh, written here. So instead, we need to use this input.value. And it's no other than just doing it like that. So now we are making the request and sending the value to the server. Okay, so have, let's have a look. You could have a look down here at the server. I'm really not sure why we're always getting two in the first place, but let's have a look at that later. H A M L D. So it seems to work really, really great now. And if I remove letters, we get the same result. Okay, so here we have a problem. If I have an empty field, we will send it anyway, but those are the things we are going to uh, filter later on. So let's get rid of all those bug bugs then. Now, I said that we were, no, we have one thing uh, left to do. Uh, after we created this XML HTTP request, we could actually add an event listener to it. So let's do that. Add event listener. We need to know when uh, the request has loaded. So we add the load event handler and we call add a callback function. Uh, like that. So when we get the response from the server, this piece of code will execute. And remember that this piece of code will execute far uh, beyond uh, when this code uh, returned the, the outer event listener because it will take a couple of milliseconds at least to get a response from the server even though the server is on the local host. If uh, we do it over the network on a remote server, this which will be the case when we uh, launch uh, this application, then we will get even longer uh, response times. Uh, so when we get the response, just let let us just log it. Console.log. Uh, we get the response by uh, uh, querying the request object, request point response text. So if we just log it like that, we load write L I or M A like that. You see that we get the result that we got in, in Postman as well. So we are almost there. A good thing to do when we uh, make uh, uh, adds the event list to the request object is to see if we actually got a 200 back so it's so everything is okay we can do it by using the status uh, the status uh, 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 property on the request object and we can have a test so if the request dot status object so this will give us the HTTP code we get back from the server it should be 200 if everything is okay but if we get a bad request or something isn't found or the server is down or anything, we will get another status uh, code out of this. And the status code will be larger than, than larger or equal to 400. So everything above 400 is error codes. So let's just generalize this and say that, okay, if we get something over 400, uh, Let's actually throw a new error. And we could add the requirement.status as well. So we just throw a new error. This means that we should probably uh, have some 
kind of try catch in, in this code when we execute the autocomplete. Um, great, so if we don't get an error, we will just proceed and uh, try to log the response. Mm -hmm. This is all good, but I, I said before that we are going to train on using um, using callback functions and we are now this code from here to more or less here is to handle network traffic and handle the Ajax request so actually let's just make a simple function called uh, request that will handle this for us so we could call the request function and let's add it to a separate module so we could reuse that in other applications of ours uh, so let's do that. Uh, I will call it ajax.js. It will not be a type. I will just keep it simple and make it a function. Uh, a function called uh, request um, request ah. like that. I will have my module dot export. So I'm not consistent right now, but I'm just showing you different ways to using module dot exports. So in this case, I, I'm just saying that this module will export some functions. It will have a method called request that will call our request. Uh, just chain it to the request uh, function down here. We could later on, if we like, add a, like a get that just calls the request object, a request function with the get parameter uh, configured, for instance. So um, we could have a look at that later on. Okay, so we have this request object that will make the request, and we actually just start off by copying all of this inside of the request and we will see what we need to change here so first of all we add an event listener and the code inside of this event listener is probably unique for the autocomplete i mean in Inside of this event listener, we will add code like adding uh, options to the data list and, and doing stuff. And this this stuff we don't want to handle inside the request function. So this needs to go out somehow. How? And we often do that by using callbacks. So we could actually add ask or ask the, uh, the the user of our request uh, function to send us a callback that we will call when the request have finished and I, I will just add this as the second attribute and I will uh, a second parameter and I will explain why and we call it callback that's a common pattern to call it everybody know what this is okay it's a callback it's supposed to be called when something is okay so if we get a response back that is positive, we could actually just call the callback function sending in the response text. So the callback function will get as its second argument as its second argument the callback will get the response text and uh, if something went south, instead of throwing an error, it's good practice to, to actually call the callback. But instead, we will just provide the rec.status like that. So if anything goes wrong, we call the callback with this first uh, uh, parameter set to uh, the status code. That indicates that something went bad and if it did not we will call the callback with the null parameter first and then the response text whoa like that so if it's okay 
we do that. If it's not, we do that. Great. So when anyone is trying to make a request, it should look something like move all of that. It should request look something like request something comma the callback function with two uh, parameters error and the data. So that was basically how we hooked this up. But now I want to complete need to use this Ajax function. So uh, let's do that. Call it Ajax require dot Ajax. And now we can do an Ajax dot request like that because Ajax in this case will be this module which have uh, um, which have a request method that we call. Great, but what's that? That's actually the config for the request. We could settle with just sending post or get, but as we know we need to like add a, additional headers and stuff, so Let's just make this a config object. Uh, that's a bad choice of word. We call it Ajax, com, Ajax config. And hook that up. Uh, Ajax config. And this one needs, uh, needs a method. That should be post and a content type that should be application slash JSON. Okay, and we send in the Ajax config to the request. That means that this is no longer null. This is the config object. We could guard that one a little bit anyway and say that config dot you are no config dot uh, um, method equals config dot method or so if this is not set we default it to get Whoa. and if the content type is not set we default it to application slash JSON, like that. Um, so now we actually don't need to, to send in application JSON. We could, just to, to be clear if we like, but if we don't, we will default to application JSON in this case. Uh, okay, so when we do open, instead of just uh, hard coding post like that, we could use the config.method. Okay, and we don't have the URL yet, and let's guard it like if we don't have a config.url, let's default that one to nothing. Uh, so we need to provide a an URL, uh, and <laughs> this will be a little bit chained, but so the URL will be the config.url the one we got from from this one originating from uh, oh, where are we app.js so this is the URL that will be sent into the autocomplete using this config into the autocomplete and we just chain it to the next uh, config the ADX config and we send it uh, further along uh, we could, could if we like, use this config, the outer config object, and just enhancing it with method and content type and send that object to the request if we like. But mm, I think this is a little bit nicer. Uh, let's head back to the Ajax object, or well, Ajax function, the request function. So we get the config.url, the method, set request headers, uh, and we set the content type 
not to that we set it to config dot uh, content type instead whoa I did something really bad I guess okay so that one goes to config dot content type okay so the query in this case is hard-coded to the input dot value so we need to provide uh, the query as well to uh, to the um, the config uh, let's go outside so we need to add the query to the ajax config object in, in some way so this is the json that we will build upon so we actually want to add that query like that so we take this query we stringify it and we add it as a, a string to the query uh, parameter in the ajax config let's clean this up so when we get back to this side instead of uh, stringifying and doing all of this we could just do a config dot query so this might seem a little odd we are actually just chaining a lot of configs back and back and forward and we don't uh, might not uh, um, earn anything on this in this case but it's a good 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 to practice those stuff to to be able to understand how the callbacks work uh, so so I, I urge you to to have a look at this anyway just to 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 get to know how to do those stuff and we will actually re uh, later on we will rewrite this one once again using something called promises but that's later on let's try it out i have certainly missed something but let's try it out anyway did it compile okay looks like that anyway okay so let's reload and i write m a oh looks like it actually working uh, now we get this function back and we could just have a test if we got an error so if error we do something what do we do we throw throw new error and we write not to work error and we add the error code and if we don't get an error we get to this line and we could just console.log the data that we got ma and it works like a charm perfect so now we don't have a lot of code in the autocomplete uh, constructor anymore because we have outsourced it to the Ajax uh, uh, module instead. So we could focus on uh, doing something here. And what we could do is to populate the list. Uh, now to populate the list we could just create options and adding those options to the data list uh, so we, we start up start off by trying that the data in this case is uh, uh, if we look in the t uh, in the console the data here is just a string it's not an object in javascript but because it's formatted as json we could uh, parse it back to uh, javascript by calling the json.parse json.parse so we just try that and see if we get a difference and I write L and now instead of getting just a string we see that we get 
objects in JavaScript instead. And those are a lot more nice to work with. So we get two matches in this uh, 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 array. And each match is an object with a name and URL. So we could actually just iterate the matches and create options for each iteration. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, so data dot match point for dot for each. Sorry for swinglish sometimes. Um, data dot match for each, and that will take a function that will give us give us one match or we could call it a team actually, because the matches are teams in this case. So for each team, we will try something and we will console. Always try in small steps like this, just to make sure team.name. So we log for each team, we log the name of the team. Reload, I write M, Type error data dot match dot for each is not a function. So, oh, of course, I removed the, the JSON parse. So just let's let us parse the data. Data equals uh, JSON dot parse data like that. You could, I mean, if you like, you could call this data JSON instead. I'm just overwriting the uh, the string I got and I parse it back to to, to uh, um, JavaScript. Mm, you could make it a new variable if you like, but I, I think it's okay like this. So M A. So when I wrote M A, I got Manchester United and Manchester City out of this one, which is great. Still not sure why I'm getting two, but we will look into that soon. You have finally, you have probably found that out already. I have not. Okay, so for each iteration, we should create a new L option element. Uh, so we add a new variable called option that well, or should we no remove that one from there it's actually inside the function in the for each option equals document point dot create elements what do we want to create we want to create an option and the option should have a value, right? Yep. So the option should have a value. And we take the option dot add attribute, set attribute, sorry. Uh, should have a value. And the attribute value should be the team dot name. Okay, so we created the option. Now let's add it to the uh, data list teams. Do we have a reference to the data list teams? Uh, I guess we don't. We could send it in, but we could also use the uh, the list attribute on the input field to get its data list. So let's do that. Uh, input type, get element, get attribute. Let's get the list attribute. And this will give us the data list ID. And then to get the data list, we do uh, document.query selector or actually document dot get element by ID and send in the data list ID. I'm 
actually lacking a lot of error handling code here, but we really don't have time for that in this demo because that will take forever. Uh, okay, so the data list should give us the data list. So we could use, by using closures all the way up, we could actually uh, add this option to the data list data list dot append child option okay save that one and we empty this one from the start like that reload and i try to write an m and of course we got a double uh, now once again and if I start continue to write for each letter it will actually add an option to this and you will see that it actually adds an option when I press a key like the down key so we have a couple of bugs here first of all we really need to uh, uh, clean the optionary well where am I here I am so when we get a new response from the server here we need to clear all the options. And a really easy way to do that, or sorry, clear, clear the data list. Uh, and we only need to do it if it's, everything is okay. And a simple way to do that is data list, just adding something else to it. And if we, for instance, use inner HTML, we could just say that, okay, empty the data list. We don't need to iterate over every DOM element and removing it by hand. We could just say that use in HTML because in HTML will replace everything inside with the new data. So let's see, let's write an M. Great, got Manchester United. And you see that it flicker, flickers and that's because every time I, I uh, um, move, uh, uh, presses a uh, key, it will actually reload this. Uh, and it, I think it's fine when you write, but we should of course uh, make sure that we can use the, uh, the up and down arrows for instance. So we need to guard this event listener here. So there are some cases, special cases, that make it so that we don't want to uh, proceed with the code. Uh, first of which is when the input dot value is empty when when the the input box is empty there is no need to call the api and as we saw earlier we actually got an error from the api as well so uh, let's remove that so we add a simple if statement so if the input dot value is empty then do something and what do we like do we just return i'm not a huge fan of writing return states uh, or writing uh, code like this on a one-liner but in this case i think it's okay actually uh, the problem with code on one line is if you're trying to stop the debugger you need to stop it on this line uh, and you can't examine what's happening on line per line or if you get an error you just say that okay you have an error on uh, on the tenth line uh, but in this case there is not not much that actually could go wrong so i think it's okay to do it like this uh, so if the input dot value is empty we just return this will make it so that if we reload if i write m and i remove the m it will not reload and i think it's okay in this case maybe we if we were able we uh, but i don't think that the api has support for it but we could query the api so we get all the teams but of course if if this is the google search box you can't get all the search results of course because you can't uh, so maybe you should just if it's empty instead we could maybe clear the options we, we could see if we can do that later but it still doesn't help us with if i try to move the cursor for instance it will trigger a new one every time so one other option is that 
it should only trigger an update if the text has changed since last last the last search so we need to somehow remember what we search for last so add a last input we create the last input that is blank from the start and if the input dot value value equals that last input then we should return as well because nothing new has happened um, but we need to set this last input somehow and we will do that when we get the result from uh, uh, the server or we could actually just set it right here so that last input gets input dot value okay i would remove the log as well so let's try it out i press m it reloads once i press a it reloads if i press down nothing happens because nothing new has has happened but if i press the backspace we see we get a uh, it, it loads it all over again if i try the l and I write I, you see that it filters really, really good. So I could do it like that, adding or removing the I. Okay, so we get, an, which could implement some kind of caching, of course, that caches the search result for L. We don't need to, to search for it again, but yeah, that's outside of the scope of this task. And you see that we could actually do stuff like just removing and it works and we could select uh, Liverpool like that so the autocomplete is more or less done by this uh, however there are some things that we might need to address first of all my uh, uh, yeah we, we we are not done with the task yet because when we get Liverpool like this, we should get a go button. So when I press the go button, we should be taken to the Liverpool FC's uh, webpage. And that is uh, 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 provided in the URL section of the match. Uh, so we should s navigate to the URL uh, in that case. So let's add code for that as well. And this event listener is starting to clog up maybe we could divide it into smaller pieces uh, soon anyway uh, so this is something for populating the um, we are populating uh, the options uh, array right or options uh, box maybe we could we we really don't need to do that inside of um, of of the constructor function because what what does it do it it takes data list it empties the data list it takes data and uh, for each team it will just do this so let's move it out we could actually move it all to a separate function and this is great if we want testability or, or be able to test this uh, this code uh, populate uh, data list uh, what data list do we want to populate and with with what do we want to populate it values so we make it quite general in this case. So, so this data list will take uh, the data list or this function will take the data list and it will take an array of values to, to, to set to each data list. Uh, so instead of this code, we just, let's just move this one down here. So the data lists in HTML will be emptied when we call it. Uh, data we don't need we don't know the data so let's remove that 
but we have values and values is an array values dot for each that will take a function like that whoa double code we don't know that it is teams or we don't care that it is teams we just call it value uh, we create an element called op uh, we create an element option we set the attribute value to the value like that and we append the child to the data list and we do not need to log anything Okay, so that gets rid of that one. Uh, now we just need to provide the populate data list with the data list and the values, and it should do the rest. Uh, populate data list. We send in the data list, and we should send in only the team names remember how to do that well we have a function called uh, filter right whoa uh, of course we're not going to use filter we are going to use map in this case because filter just gives us new objects or or a certain amount of object but with map we could make a new a new array so let's uh, we need to parse the data before we do anything else uh, so let's uh, call the map on the data data or actually on data dot match dot map so we will map all the matches and the matches look like this it's an array of objects looking like that and we want to only get a new array containing the names uh, so this function function will be called by for each object which is a team and we will actually return return the team dot name and this new uh, this new array will be sent as the second argument to the populate data list so this is a good exercise using maps oh so nervous will it work reload l oh yeah it did it did so we have separated uh, the populate data list from the constructor function making it testable so we could actually test this uh, function by its own if we like so in this case I mean I've been really really uh, eager to tell you to separate HTML from JavaScript and in this case we are writing HTML into the JavaScript which is not a good thing like this but if we think about how we will probably use this autocomplete it's really nice to just have an input button or input field and just just like this say okay create a new uh, create a new uh, autocomplete for the input and it will hook everything up without us needing to to do those stuff ourselves so i would in this case argue that it would be really a good thing to move the data list and this code to the autocomplete.js instead. Um, well, of course, we could do it like this: add a template, add an option into the template, and read the template like we've done in the several uh, in several um, tasks before. Um, but in this case, I've, I, I actually think it's a good thing to do it the opposite way. Uh, it will generate more code in autocomplete.js, but it will be more uh, uh, self-containing. 
so okay let's do that we need to uh, have a function called create data list that will create the data list it will do a document dot uh, well let's see how to do this <coughs> let's just try something to get get us started so uh, we are going to create this um, data list document dot create element data list uh, it really doesn't matter where in the document the data list is placed, uh, but it should have an ID. Yes, let's just come up with one for now. That's really not the best way of doing it, but okay, we start off by that in a way. Um, set attribute. Uh, ID to uh, team data list for now. Uh, we add it to the uh, document dot body actually uh, dot body. That is the that is the body tag on, of the document. So we could document body dot append child. And we add a data list like that. Make sure we return the data list created so we don't need to find it. Uh, and the create data list should actually take an input so we could hook it up with the input field. So let's do that like input dot set attribute to uh, list dot team data list so we hook those two up together and then we return the data list now we could instead of doing that and that we could just say that equals create data list and it takes the input like that okay let's see how we got it now oh did i remove them from the no i did not let's do that uh, it still works we could have a look at the element in the body we find that the data list have been added at the bottom and this one is hooked up together with uh, the input type in that case i don't think there is a way to associate the data list with the input field using code without needing to do this uh, by by the string like list team data list uh, matches the id team data list i don't think there is a way to hook it up uh, outside of the dom uh, so in this case we should have some kind of randomized IDs. I will not do that right now, but uh, maybe we sh that would be a good idea. But after consulting with some colleagues of mine, uh, we actually came to a conclusion to do this in another way. Uh, and I, I, I had some idea about uh, making this team data list uh, ID randomized uh, and, and we actually had to do that if we want to be able to have multiple instances of the autocomplete serving different input fields uh, in, in the same page. Uh, if we are okay with just uh, uh, autocompleting in one, on one input um, field per, per page this this solution is okay but if we get multiple input pages uh, input uh, fields uh, those IDs will uh, collide so we need to have some kind of uh, incremental number or some randomized uh, uh, hash or something 
to 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 separate those but actually we will do it in another way we say that okay to be able to use this autocomplete you will need to uh, hook it up uh, in the uh, app.js like uh, this like doing a new autocomplete with the input and the config and uh, as well as adding a list attribute to the input field uh, so uh, we call this teams uh, so by doing that we could actually uh, make use of the the list uh, item from this the input uh, button and set it to be the id of the data list uh, so let's do that input type get attribute uh, and let get, let's get the list attribute and we set the ID of the data list to that attribute. So hopefully, I haven't tried this out, but hopefully this could mean that we could have the same autocomplete data list serving multiple input fields. Uh, maybe not the best of selling points. Uh, However, let's see if we could get the so, yeah, browser up and running. Oh, it's down. I, I had a break, so probably during the break, my server and Vagrant shut down. Oh, it's shut down. I will start up Vagrant and the stuff. Okay, up and running. Um, reload. Great. S L. Okay, still works. Uh, so now instead uh, the input fields list attribute specifies the ID of the data list. It's not optimal. Um, we could actually end up using the same uh, attribute here as we have the ID on the input field and then we will have a problem. But for now, I think it's it's good. So I, I, I said that we could have multiple instances of the input field. We, we should be able to do that. Uh, let's say that uh, in this application, you're supposed to select the top three teams. Uh, then we should be able to do something like this, like this team input one and team input two, for instance, that we have two input fields. Uh, we should be able to hook that up in the app.js by uh, uh, just creating a new instance of the autocomplete. Uh, the first one, uh, we could actually move that down here and move that down there. So the first one uses the input field one, the second one, the input field two, uh, but we have one problem and that is that if, uh, the autocomplete function will always create a data list with the input. So we need some added functionality in the data list. So if we already have a data list uh, with uh, uh, the proper name, then we should not create any more. So let's insert a little test. So if the input and uh, we will because we need it several times, we will save this uh, list ID, and the list ID is this one. Uh, so if the list ID uh, is, well, if we have an ID that is the list ID, uh, document.query selector. Query selector. So this will be something like if we have a data list with the ID list ID. And I mean, if you're using IDs, this is actually redundant. Uh, so we could do it like that. Uh, and because this is. Uh, a variable we can't do it like that so in this case it's actually better to do it with um, get element by id 
and just send in the variable. Okay, so if this is not falsy, it will give us undefined if it's not set. Uh, so uh, if it's not set, then we will just return. We will not create another uh, uh, data list. So if we already get one with this name, we won't create a new one. Uh, let's see. We have two input fields, input one and two, but we have no data list. Uh, so I made I made something, some bad turns somewhere. So this is probably not. Uh, Oh, this one will fail, of course. So if we have we create a data list, we append it and return the data list. Uh, yeah, uh, this will be a problem. If we just return empty here, uh, uh, we will get a problem. Uh, we should actually, if... Oh, I've, I've put it the wrong way. If we have already have a list with this ID, then we should actually get that list. So we, we, we get that out, that will either be uh, undefined or a data list. And if it is a data list, then we return the data list. If it's not a data list, we will uh, create a data list and return that. Okay. Does not like how I write my code. Okay, so let's do it like that. Then. Okay, reload. Great. Now we have two data lists, uh, <laughs> which is not what we wanted. Uh, right. And do, 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 do. Oh, I forgot to add the. Was that line I removed? Uh, set attribute. I want to set the ID to the list ID. Great. And now we have two input fields, but only one data list. So I, I'm not sure if this works, but let's see. Lee Liverpool. And now we have a problem because now we will get Liverpool, uh, Manchester United, Liverpool, Manchester. Okay, we have maybe some bugs to, to, to fix, but actually we could now make use of the same data list for, for all those, those input fields and we could actually see that as a feature, but I will not to dwell uh, deeper into that. Um, what I really want to discuss in this video, uh, it's um, uh, to have a discussion uh, about promises. And if we look at this Ajax request file, we have built some kind of util ajax.js file that we could make use of. We could, for instance, if we like, we could add some functions. We could, I mean, if we want to make a post, we could make a special function called post, like this. And this should do everything the same way as the request, but it will always default to post. So by that, I mean, we could just call the uh, function request. We could send in the config with one modification and just throw the call back uh, further along. So we just chain it. So uh, post will call our request method with the same properties with one exception and that is that config.method equals post. And we could do the same thing for a get, if we like. Uh, 
the method get. And we need to expose those uh, inner functions. So we make a post is post and a get that is get. Uh, so by this request is the versatile uh, function that could be both post or gets or whatever method we like actually. But we make a special one for post and a special one for get. This means that in our app.js or sorry in our autocomplete when we are using the uh, ajax.request we could remove method from the ajax config and instead of calling request we could make use of our post like that. Of course you should document document those methods so, so that the user know when to use which one. Uh, but this is quite a neat way to, 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 to remove functionality from the, the ADX uh, config or the configuration needed. Uh, let's just see if it works. Oh, it works just the same as before. I said that we were supposed to look into promises and I changed my mind. That happens a lot actually. Uh, so this demo is more or less over uh, for now. Um, there are some points to make and I really, really want you to understand this callback pattern that we are, we are calling our request or post method sending in a callback. Uh, where we expect the first argument for our callback to be uh, and uh, be not be null if there was an error during uh, the AJAX call and the second argument to be the data uh, that we received if there was no error. So when this function works like it should, this should be null and this should be the data. And on the other side, uh, we make use of this by calling the callback with null and the response text if everything was okay. And we call the callback with the status, the error status, if something went wrong. So you need this concept uh, because this is a really common pattern and you will see it all over uh, modules that you may want to include in your projects if it's on the client or on the server. Uh, so it's really important that you understand that concept. What we're going to do next, and I will do that in another demo, is to talk about promises because promises change, change this model because this model uh, is based upon that we have some common understanding that okay the first parameter should be the error and the second should be the data. Uh, maybe someone do it the opposite way and we will have misunderstandings and stuff and promises cleans up this mess more or less. But you need to understand this concept before you could understand promises. Uh, promises is one of those things that are new quite new in the browser anyway. I'm not actually sure about the compatibility. Can I use promises? Promises, yeah, you can actually in every major browser except IE, uh, but it's the, it's in place in Edge, so you can use it there. On the server you have um, more options because you can control your environment in another way. So the next demo uh, to uh, look out for is uh, a demo about promises and, and we will actually in that demo we will reuse this ajax.js but maybe I will have another example. I'm not sure yet.